Hi, and in today's Microsoft Word tutorial, I'm going to be showing how to make this printable calendar in Word. And what you can see is we are going to leave these little blocks here to insert the dates because obviously each year those change. And up here we've got the month of the year. And again, you don't have to put that in because you can just write it in once you've printed it off, or you can just go in and change each of these and then just print off an annual calendar. So let's open a new document. And as you can see, the orientation of my page is incorrect, so we've got to go and change that. So let's go up to the Layout tab, go along to Orientation, and change it to Landscape. The next thing we need to do is to reduce our margins, because by default our margins are quite thick. So let's go back up to Layout, to Margins, click on the drop-down, and select Narrow. Then I'm just going to hit my return key a few times just so that we've got enough room for the title. So hit that three times. And now we're going to insert a table. So let's go up to insert, table, insert table. Now for this particular demonstration, I will need 14 columns and I will need 11 rows. Now admittedly this is a slightly more complicated design because we've got the little boxes in the corners but you don't have to do that if you don't want to. If you just want normal boxes then you just have to do seven rows across because obviously that's uh, sorry seven columns across because obviously that's seven days of the week and then you don't have to do 11 you only have to do six because the top one here is going to be the title and then you only need five to incorporate all the numbers you would be required for the month. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to move this line here. So just click and drag it over until it's roughly a square. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click in the square, anywhere in one of these squares, and I'm going to go up to Layout. And here, you, in this section here, it gives you the information about how wide and tall your columns and rows are. So here we are concerned with the width. And since I've moved this over and it's smaller, my width has changed to 0.71. Now I'm very happy with the width of this. So what I need to go and do is to change every other column to this width here. So I'm going to go up to width here. I'm going to highlight it or select it. I'm going to hit Command or Control C to copy it. Then I'm going to miss out this column highlight this column, go up to width, select it, press Command or Control V to paste, press Enter. And I'm going to do that with every other row to form those boxes. Now I'm going to do exactly the same with this column. So click in this column and you can see the width of this one is 3.17. So again, highlight that. Command or Control C to copy that figure. And then select this column. And again, do exactly the same. Paste the figure into there and hit Enter. Okay, so now we've got a general outline of where we're going with this calendar. So now we need to make sure that this width here is thicker than it currently is. But in order to form these boxes, we've included, there is actually a row here. So that's why we've got more rows, is because this is made up of a row and a column. We need to extend the height of this row here. So let's just go back. And we'll miss out the top row. Let's just highlight that at the moment, just change the color, because then you know that that's the title row for Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. So we start on this row. So this is the box. So let's just click on this box here, go back up to layout. If you want it perfectly square, then we've made the width of this 0.71. You can actually highlight it, copy and paste it, and then just paste that into the height, press enter, and then you should have a perfect square here because if I click in there, the height and the width are exactly the same. Then miss out a row because we're going to make that taller. Click on this row. 
again 0 0.71 just paste it because we've copied it miss out a row and this is just to make those corner boxes square so all the corner boxes now I talk about the corner boxes I'm talking about these are square so these rows here are going to be the wider or the taller section of the box so with this row here select it go up to height and I'm going to select 2 and then again up to here select 2 oh, 2 press enter Two. Okay. Now we haven't used all of our page up here, but we're going to put the title here. If you want to extend these boxes, I've used two centimeters, but if you want to extend them to make them a bit taller, we can go ahead and do that. I'll speed the video up. You can go and put in 2.5, let's say 2.5, press enter. If this happens and you've got an additional page that appears, then all you need to do is go down to your rulers side here if you can't see rulers go to view and then just check rulers here go down to the bottom until your cursor changes here between the white and the gray section click and this little faint line will come up that's your margin line just pull it down until the page below disappears and you won't print out two pages when you want to print all of this out okay so I think we've got our calendar pretty much where we want it at the moment. Now we just need to get rid of these border lines and merge some cells. So for the titles at the top here, we need to merge this cell and this cell together and put in Monday. So select those two cells, go to layout and go to merge cells. Now we're going to be merging a lot of cells. So again, those two cells and up to merge. If you don't want to keep going backwards and forwards, you can create a shortcut key. And the really quick way to do that is to simply go up to the tools, down to customize keyboard. Then in this section here, go down to table here. Then in the search bar here, just type in merge and then you'll get this merge table merge cells. Click on that. And you can see I've assigned command R, command key plus R. That's my shortcut key. Now, let's just remove that and start again. To assign a new shortcut key, go down to this section here. It says press new keyboard shortcut. Now, this can be anything you like. So I press command or control R. So I'm pressing command R. Now, what it will tell you here is whether that shortcut key is used for anything else. And then you can decide whether you want to keep it or you want to change it. It's completely up to you. So currently... Command R means write paragraph. So I don't really use that, so I'm not too worried about that. So I'm happy to use Command R to merge cells. So all you have to do is just then assign it and then click OK. So what that now means that when I highlight these two cells here, instead of having to go back up to merge cells, if I just press Command R, then it will automatically do it. So as I go across, I just use that shortcut key and it saves me going back up and forward back up and down and wasting quite a lot of time. Again, we can do the same with this one. Click and drag to merge these two cells together here. Command R, or if you don't want to use a shortcut key, go back up to layout and merge those cells using this merge cell icon here. And just go along and do that to all of these. And as you can see, we're beginning to reveal this corner square. Okay, now you would think that if we were able to, we could just do exactly the same to merge these two here. But unfortunately, you can't do that because if I click and drag, it actually merges all four of, or all three of these cells. So what we need to do is just get rid and make this borderline here of this cell. This is still a cell here, but it's just a very tall one. Uh, we just need to make this borderline here disappear. So just click inside this cell, go up to table design, and all this section here refers to your border lines. So go up to this section here that says borders, click on the drop down, and you can see that our left border is selected. We want to unselect that, and you can see the border line still is there, so the cell still exists. We haven't merged it, so these cells have merged. This hasn't merged, we've just made this borderline invisible. 
And we just need to do the same with all of those cells. Just keep going back up. Once you've selected it, you don't need to go back up to the drop down and select it because now it's selected within this icon. So you just need to click in the cell, and go back up and get rid of that borderline. Okay, once you're finished, let's go up and format this row here. So it's a little bit narrow at the moment. I want to make it a little bit taller. So I've selected it, go to layout, and then the height here. Okay, so let's put in um, 0.7. Yep, that's fine. And again, we've got another page here, but the bottom margin is now quite narrow. So in order to get rid of this second page that's appeared, you can see there, Let's just go up to the top margin and reduce the size of the top margin. There we go, and that page has disappeared. Now we'll just put in our days of the week. And now we'll just align them to the center. So select the whole row, and we're going to align the text to the center of the cells. Go up to layout, and then go along to this section here. Now you don't have to have them in the middle. You can have them to the left center, uh, you can have them at the bottom center, it's completely up to you. You can select from any of these options, but I'm just going to center mine. And then in order to put the title of your month at the top here, I'm going to use a text box. So I'm going to go to insert, text box, draw text box, and then just click and drag. Again, you don't have to use this because you can just print this out as it is now and you can just write the month across the top. But just to show you how to put a title in, uh, we just put January. And then I'm going to select that text, go up to Home. I'm going to change the font and I'm going to use Abject Failure. And then increase that font size, I think. Just keep using this Increase Font Size icon here until you're happy with the size of the text. So I know this is going a little crazy at the moment. Don't worry, I'll show you how to correct it. In fact, let's go to 40. So I've just typed in 40 in this box here. Press Enter. Now, the text has disappeared. So the way we fix it is we're first going to center it. So once the text is selected, then go over to Align to Center or Center Text. So that's the first thing. Now you need to increase the size of your text box. But as you can see, all text boxes, if I just click away, come with a white background and a black border. If we get rid of those two, then it just becomes complete transparent and we're just left with the text. So select the text box, go to Shape Format, go to Shape Outline, click, and then No Outline. Again, Shape Fill, click on the drop down, select No Fill. And there you can see it's completely transparent. So then we can pop that roughly where we want to and to make sure it's completely aligned, make sure again you're on shape format, which will happen once you've selected your text box. And then go along to the align tool here, click on the drop down and select align to center. And that will center your title across the top. So that's all ready for you now to print. As I say, you can change the title if you want to or completely delete it so that you can just simply write it all in. Or if you want to be really efficient, then you can go into these text boxes now. Sorry, you can go into the cells and you can actually type the dates if you want to. And then you can print them out after that. So I hope that's helped you today. If it has, please subscribe and have a great day.